Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Peripheral, which I should also say, like, I have a hard time saying that word. I say peripheral, but it's peripheral. It, either way, it sounds like mush in my mouth, because I, just, I have a hard time with that word. Either way, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So immediately picking up uh, where last episode left off, uh, Burton and his team get to work. So it does seem like, obviously, the, um, the haptics that they have, and obviously it seems like, well, maybe it's all over their body, but the haptics, at least some of his buddies, it seems like the haptic is in their arm. But it might be that they all have the haptics, like, all throughout their bodies. But like I said, I guess maybe it's, like, a permanent thing of once it's in, it can't be removed or whatever. Because, like, why wouldn't it be removed from their bodies? Considering it seemed like it might have been, like, a military service thing. But it does seem like it is, like, a, oh, an enhancement. I, I guess the main uh, thing for it is to, like, make you a more efficient team. Like, right, the fact is you're all, like, linked up. Because one of them, like, gets to work or, like, hacking the drone. And I, I was worried, like, it's like, well, it's further in the technology range. So I'm like, maybe they won't be able to. But it, it could be, like, a pre like what is present day to them 2032. Like, it could be a drone from then. So maybe it is a a hackable. Because I thought, like, well, maybe. Because maybe there's only so much technology they were able to be ha have sent back to them. Either way, um, when they were able to hack it. Um, and draw them in, and they're able to link up, and it's like, right, they're all kind of seeing the same thing, so it's like, once again, you're supposed to be like one proficient team, you kind of, you're all linked together, you, you got all the same intel, you're all kind of like moving on the same mark, it's kind of like a, you're, you're, can, you're, you're linked together, essentially, it kind of reminds me of a video game uh, thing, like the link attack thing, uh, from um, the Trails of Code Steel games. It just it reminds me of that, which I think is kind of interesting. Either way, they end up wiping out most of the uh, squad, except for three, because they hacked them back and hid themselves on the uh, on the drone. So, But luckily, um, Connor showed up at the last minute, which the explanation for that is actually really heartbreaking when you hear about it later. That it's like the reason why he showed up because he's like, right, I was kind of a witness. They, they were told to do scorched earth, but they let me go simply because they saw my condition and they took pity on me. And honestly, the more he thought about it, the more it pissed him off. And he was going to come back and kill that guy regardless. And it just happened to come across that situation as it was. But it's like, yeah, I happened to stumble across them and they took pity on me. And that's what pissed me off. It's like, that's the only reason why I showed up when I did. But I already had it in my head. I was going to kill that guy regardless, you know. So, she's just showing that Connor isn't in a good place. And obviously, Flynn doesn't know about... Burton and them kind of keep their distance from Connor for multiple reasons. I think it's a combination of guilt and just... They are, like, saddened to see him in the condition that he's in. But also because they feel guilty. It's like, we're the reason why he is. Like, we are responsible if, like, whatever happens to him. If he ever offs himself one day, it's on us. You know, and I, they've never told Connor the truth, and obviously Flynn wouldn't know that either. So that's probably even more reason why Burton's like reluctant to draw Connor back in. I mean, also because once again, he's drunk most of the time, understandably so. Like considering all that they're, um, all that he's kind of dealing with. So luckily, uh, their mom ended up sleeping through most of. Well, not most, all of everything that went down. But um, now it's a situation like, cool, what do we do with the bodies? It's like, well, do we burn them? Do we bury them? So now it is a situation of Flynn is like, I got to go back in there. Because um, that's the only way. Well, it wasn't just her decision. Burton said, like, no, you have to do it because it's the only way to make sure that we get any intel we need. So she goes back in because, well, we got... They, like, cause there's, there's still some questions I have because I didn't bring this up last episode, but I should have, cause that should have made, that should have been like, oh, there's something there. The fact is when we got introduced to Wilf, like I said, Alita was visit, visiting him in a, and like, I, I couldn't, I, I was butchering her name last episode, but it's Alita. I think the spelling kept throwing me off. Uh, either way, Alita visited him in a little girl's body. And I was like, oh, I thought, I mean, the technology is there. So you'd probably be able to take advantage of it 
present day as well. Like even in 2099, you'd be able to take advantage of it. But what I mean by that is the fact is that she presented herself like as a little girl. So she was, the little girl was most likely a, um, uh, here, here I go. Peripheral. Um, so it's like, right. The technology exists. So you can probably even use it present day. It doesn't have to just be used in that time gap situation, or maybe it does. I don't, I don't know. And once again, that conversation about our world, but now that our world comment might even have even more context of, it's not just, um, I was like, I figured it was a time thing, but it, 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 I was on the right, it's specifically a stuff. It's what they refer to as a splinter, a parallel timeline, a splinter timeline. The moment someone from the future interacted with someone from the past, basically, it automatically created a splinter timeline. Makes you wonder who is the one who re... I mean, I would assume it had to be Alita. She had to be the one who sent that to Burton because she was looking for someone to take advantage of to use because, once again, I think it's just a uh, 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 compatibility thing. Whoever reached a certain level is like, okay, your brain, you have the certain skill set I need, because like, right, if you could do it with a game, then I mean, operating a peripheral um, peripheral in the future is just like that. It's like piloting like something for VR. It's the exact same, so that's what she was potentially looking for, and she ended up, it just you had to get certain, getting the upping the, the difficulty of where Flynn got was you know, the end result, it, it seems like. So, Of kind of showing like, hey, this is, if you were able to make it this far, that means you could be of use to me. We still don't know what Alita's up to. Because this has to deal with the research and institute. And because she referenced it last episode, and I forgot about it. The group that she was, she was kind of working for. And then she, whatever it is that she did with Burton, she stole something. But once again, she didn't steal it necessarily. It was embedded in Burton. But specifically his eye. So that's why I'm wondering, how did she get access to it? And does Flynn still have it? Because it, like, it's, and that's what I was bringing up last episode. Is it ingrained in Flynn now? Like, did it download itself into Flynn, not just like into Burton, the Burton peripheral? But who knows? Or it could just be like, yeah, the moment he got it, the moment he died, it, uh, Alita transferred it to herself. Who knows? Because it seems like she, Wilf's the one who, because they have their past and she's got, they, they've got their own thing going on. And so he's like, right, I have an opportunity for you. So he kind of put her in this position because I think Lev reached out to him. He found the right person. He figured like, oh, could take advantage of this because Lev needed someone on the inside of the research institute because maybe they're, they're specifically the ones that have access to probably like, the time travel aspect to it because it is in fact time travel. I, I feel like such an idiot for not immediately thinking about it last episode. I'm like, oh, it's similar to like Travelers. If you've never seen the show Travelers, well, it was on Netflix here in the US. It was on TV for like the first two seasons, but in Canada because it's a Canadian show, but then it like, but then it moved to Netflix for its third season in Canada, but it was always on Netflix here in the US. Uh, but basically, it has a similar form of time travel. It's about time traveling your consciousness. You don't actually time travel your body. It's just your consciousness. Um, and, but you basically, it, it's basically the inverse. Instead of like traveling your consciousness, like downloading your data like to a peripheral in the future, you're basically downloading your mind into a real living body. Uh, you basically need the time elevation and time of death and all that for a person to be able to hijack their body. You know, that cause the least friction in the timeline. So, because we don't know what it is that Lev wants from the Research Institute. Maybe it's the same thing that Alita got. Uh, because when eventually um, uh, Flynn comes back, they've already got everything set up. They gave her a peripheral and everything that looks like herself. But, uh, and Wilf is explaining everything. It's like, right, you're like basically 70 years into the future, but she doesn't believe him. It's like, well, uh, this is London. This isn't the London you know. Uh, that's why it looks so different. Um, okay. And also, your mom's going to die in four weeks. So just to prove, it's like, yep, yeah, here's her obituary, which she's having reluctancy believing it. But it's like, hey, if you don't believe us, we'll send you medication that will work back in time. 
Granted, Flynn finds out later on, it's like, oh, it was actually never a guarantee. It almost basically, the percentage was like, there's like a 57% chance it was going to work. There was no, like, guarantee. Wilf made it sound like it was a guarantee. It's like, oh, yeah, it's like spraying weed is the exact wording he used, and that's what pissed Flynn off. Because it's like, how am I supposed to trust you guys when you guys talk in half truths? So you don't tell me everything. You're keeping me in the dark, I guess. They have to kind of keep you in the dark for a certain reason because they have to ease you into like the whole like, well, there's a lot that can happen in 70 years. A lot can transpire. It sounds like the world isn't what it once was. It sounds like the world, like some shit went down and the world got really, really bad and it led to this future. And it's all about changing that future. Once again, why Alita's about like, right. She kind of was like, oh, I'm done with the world. There's no saving it. But it's like, why right, doesn't have to be our world. And the reason why she was probably saying that is because we are creating a parallel timeline. Who knows if we, you, you and me, Wilf, things might play out completely differently and you and me may not even exist in this timeline. But or maybe it's like maybe not our worlds, their world, as in like um, maybe a different Alita and Wilf will grow up in a completely, you know. And then you also kind of get into that conversation of, well, that means OG timelines don't disappear. They still co they still exist to some extent. So it's like, yeah, whatever this timeline is, say like this is the doomed timeline. It's like it's always gonna be there, but there's gonna be a branched off timeline which we can save. Cause it is the thing of yes, the past has been altered and it's going down a different path, yet this future can still like coexist and talk to them. But I think it starts getting that's why they're like, Yeah, we can't tell you much because the records get mm muddled because it's been 70 years and probably like a lot of stuff got lost along the way um they probably that's probably the only thing they could really hold on to but also because things are constantly shifting it's like who knows if this intel is useful anymore because the timelines change so obviously it's a hard pill for flynn to swallow but it is enough for her to go back to her mom and be like are you are you like because she ended up confronting her mom about the condition that she has was it a, a galoma, a, a gyloma or something like that? It's basically like a, a tumor. And it was like, oh, how'd you know about that? It's like, oh, that guy was right. I mean, but that doesn't mean anything. He could just know stuff present day and just be like, well, but why, why the theatrics of the future and stuff like, I don't know. Like, because Burton immediately is like, right, the guy's just trying to like control the conversation. He's showing that he's in control if you're believing all this. But regardless of it all, she gave her mom the medication because... It's like, why not? She's like, uh, what, what's it going to do, honey? Kill me sooner? You know? That's why she's been trying to make every day as precious as possible. So, There's also that interesting conversation between, I believe it's Ash and Lev, where Ash was kind of saying, like, right, um, Wilf isn't the, Wilf is the type of person you get him to deliver something that um, he's different from you. And, and Lev is like, oh, because I'm this, because I'm that. She's like, no, because you're a killer. That saying that Will doesn't have, like, some type, Will isn't the type of person that you could turn to in a situation like that. But Lev is like, I didn't, I needed someday to tell you about how I met Will, because basically saying he has a very unique capacity for violence, you know, making him part of the family. So, because any, what we've seen of Will so far, he's been very calm and help, you know, we've seen the good side of him, but I guess kind of implying, like, when the time comes, there's a nasty side of him too, just because I'm, Whatever happened in these 70 years, whatever environment him and Alita had to grow up in, it makes you probably um, harden and just uh, you do whatever you need to to survive. So Will presents a certain way, but truthy told is they're implying like, oh, there's a killer beneath that. So this episode also gave us clarity on the mercenaries that came after Flynn and her family. So it turns out the Research Institute. Basically, because I think I'm underestimating the power of 3D printing in, in 3022. I mean, uh, in 2032, because that's all they have to do. Like the 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 uh, medicine that Wilf got for um, Flynn's mom, Flynn Burton's mom was just you just had to send it back in time to like they just hack into the machine and basically 3 3D print what they need. Because I was like, how? Because they can't, there, I, there is no direct form of time travel, at least the way they make it sound. It seems like peripherals is the only means of time traveling 
forward and that all you have to do like to interact with the past is I like, basically hack into the machinery of the past because as I say it's literally all about it's just data transferring that's all the time travel really is so if you can utilize that all you have to and probably like if you just need the components and there's pretty good 3d printing already all you need to do is send it to a machine and can 3d print probably uh the hell like a leader probably set up the whole like 3D printing the helmet and the instructions of sending it to Burton or rather Easy Ice, um, the character and whoever's really behind it. I don't know. I don't know if Alita really knows that Flint's behind it. The Institute knew they were like, oh, the girl and her family. So like they already know it's not Burton. They know it's Alita, but I mean they know it's um they know it's Flint. So that's what I'm curious about. But all they had to do was send, like, that's also the thing, I guess, like, the the mercenaries probably didn't think much of it, like, I guess, like, the most advanced thing they got was the cloaking technology, which I guess, like, maybe it's there to some extent in 2032, but it's more advanced in 29, but I guess it's like, right, all they needed was instructions of, like, hey, this is some some high-tech stuff we're working with, and, because they didn't seem too shocked by it, but I mean, it's, not, I guess it's not anything too out there like it's like oh maybe it's like i guess you're like hey we're being paid for this job whoever it is has access to some crazy technology that's about it because that's what i assume the mercenaries from like from like 2099 like i said i thought it was like a full time travel thing but they don't have like the full capacity of time travel and once again it's just a mainly a transfer data they hired because even the guy was like yeah we um i uh, went through a thing called uh the dark net and the lady he was talking to was like, I know what the dark net is. So it's like, yeah, it's such an ancient thing in their minds because that was like something, there's so much of that world that is lost, I think, uh, in those 70 years that it's like, okay, we need to find Alita. Um, it's like, did you make sure everyone's going to die? He's like, yep, scorched earth type of situation. So, And circling back to Flynn really quickly, she did talk to Lev and them about it. It's like, well, if, you know, this is a splinter timeline and stuff, well, what about the me in this timeline? Like, you know, original timeline, like, was I alive? Did I have kids? Was I married? You know, the fact is they're avoiding those questions, maybe because they legitimately don't have access to those answers because the timeline has shifted. It's like, well, any information we'd give you is kind of relevant now. But even then, it's like, well, maybe so many records are, like, destroyed that it makes it hard to find anything because we are focusing on London. We have no idea what the outside world looks like. It could be like London. It could be one of those situations where this is the only city that's left standing. It's like, oh, where are all the people? So there might the population might be severely reduced. Like the world is probably ending where it's like, yeah, there's probably it could be like a nuclear war type of thing of like, yeah, a lot of the rest of the earth is uninhabitable and just London might be one of the few pocket cities that are left type of situation. I don't know. They also helped them out by um, sending a quarter of a million dollars back to the past, but it's like, well, how am I supposed to take advantage of that? Burton's like, the moment I do that, my social security is going to like run up. So it's like, they'll find a way around it. So basically their cousin Leon got the, um, the, uh, won the lottery for 250,000. So it's like, cool, cool, cool. So that's, that's a roundabout way. And Burton's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, this is a large leap for it to me believing this whole like time travel thing that this is from the future. So I didn't talk about it at all, but the Mr. Uh, Pickett of it all last episode, I mean, really, it's just like, we know he's kind of got his business going on. Obviously he's kind of irked about the whole, uh, Connor and Barry bullying his boys, as he put it last episode, and he kind of made an example of one of his guys last episode. But uh, yeah, he was looking at um, Flynn, Leon, and uh, Burton, who's kind of like pissed off at them. I think it's like, right, you just they irked him just because of everything that went down the day before or whatever. Uh, but now he gets uh, contacted by the Institute, and basically they're hiring him to. It's like, Rob, we're going to pay you this amount of money. We're going to send you about a quarter of it now as a down payment, and they send it to him. And so it's like, okay, we need you to kill Flynn and Burton. So no one can know about, because there's no telling what they know. Like Once again, like they don't have direct access to whatever it is that Alita put them in position of, oh, you got to know what this is. Once again, either that data is somewhere in Flynn and she hasn't had, she can't access it. The only person who probably can is Alita. So 
I'm surprised he hasn't made more of an effort to contact her, but it's like, right, she probably knew that Lev and the others would try and find her, so maybe that's why she's keeping her distance for now, but, um... Or, like I said, it could be she has access to the data and she's just, like, going through it. But it definitely seemed like a having the Matrix code or whatever it is. Something that the Institute's been working on, she now has access to. So, maybe it's, like, some time travel blueprint to make it more controllable, the, the whole time travel element, rather than needing just a per, uh, peripheral, like, and making it, like, a one-way thing. Like, I mean, once again, it's just simply a transfer of data, but maybe they want to try and make it more of a feasible thing of making the bot bodies be able to time travel. Who knows? Um, it does present some very interesting developments. Yes, I know I did a lot of theorizing at last episode, and a lot of those uh, questions I had got, you know, um, got answered. But once again, I, that's the fun of, like, trying to understand everything. It's There are still some questions that need to be answered up. Once again, filling in the gap of those seven year, 70 years, uh, plus, like, what, what Alita's up to exactly. What Lev wants out of all of this as well, too. Because Wolf was like, yeah, you said that all we were going to do, just like, you wanted to sit down with Alita, so that's why I'm trying to set this all up. He's like, that's the only reason why I'm doing all of this. Uh, cause he has, you know, but it's like, Lev is like, oh yeah, like, let us continue being friends, cause you don't want us, like, to enter the position where we're not friends at all, you know? Definitely seems like a situation where it's like, yeah, everyone's kinda out for themselves to some extent. There was even that line, um, who was it that Wolf was talking? Oh, he was talking to Alita, exactly, like, uh, before all of this, and at some point in the past, and he made that conversation about, like, both can be true, self-interest uh, and altruism, you know, so everyone's kind of got a little bit of that going on, everyone's looking out for themselves, but it's like, oh, we might be doing something for the greater good, as Alita kind of put it later on, it's like, oh, you're doing something for the greater good, so, I don't know. We'll ultimately have to wait and find out uh, where all this takes us. I am curious if it's going to be, old, like, the fact that they only released two episodes rather than the typical three makes me think this might have, like, an outer range um, schedule where it's, like, two episodes a week type of situation. We'll ultimately have to wait and see, but um, I'm very, very interested to see where the next episode takes us with all of this. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, little light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.